hello everyone so now we will start a new playlist in that one we are going to discuss about the troubleshooting most of our student is requesting they are facing some challenges in the real scenario also so what we are going to do we are going to create the troubleshooting lab for ccna and ccnp so basic requirement you should know the ccna and ccnp if you have the concept of ccna and ccnp then you can easily understand this concept anyhow i am going to take some basic stuff also in this one i am going to uh, discuss some basic stuff no issue but better if you did not watch our ccna ccnp videos you can watch that one before going to this one at least you should have some basic idea about that one okay even if you are uh, Uh, fresher no issue you can watch if you have any doubts anything you can ask us okay write us in the comments or whatsapp us or follow our instagram there you can ask the question also so this playlist we are going to give the name as a cisco troubleshooting lab for ccna ccnp okay so whatever topics we learn in ccna ccnp we are going to do the troubleshooting lab for that one okay so if you see here this is our first lab we can say switching lab 1 in this video we are going to give you overview we are going to give you overview about this lab what we are doing so just remember this is for ccna and ccnp okay ccna ccnp troubleshooting lab t shoe we can say or troubleshooting lab whatever we are facing in our real environment whatever the challenge we have we are going to see here so this is a basic stuff here in this video just i am going to give you overview in our next class we are going to solve that one okay so if you see here what we will say we have the switch 1 switch 2 switch 3 this is a axis layer switch okay this is axis layer switch which is connected to the end user okay and we can say this is gateway okay we can say gateway this is a layer 3 switch if you want me i can say this is a layer 3 this is a layer 2 in simple i can say like this this is layer 2 switch okay this is a layer 3 switch and here this guy the pc1 he is having this ip 192.168.10.1/24 and he is in the vlan 10 okay this port is in the vlan 10 same thing we have one more guy pc2 pc3 they are also connected to the what we can say core switch okay that is layer 3 switch and they are in the vlan 10 this guy is in vlan 10 this guy is in the vlan 20 okay and this one is a trunk port this one also trunk this is a trunk this is also trunk and this port is in the vlan 10 and this guy is having this ip okay and here in this switch we have inter inter vlan routing svi SVI, if you remember, inter VLAN routing, we will do in this one. We have already configuration. Okay, we already have the configuration in that one. And if you see what we use here, this is a default gateway. What we can say the default configuration for this switch. This switch is having the 192.168.10.100, 192.168.20.100. This is for VLAN 10 gateway, and this is the VLAN 20 gateway. so whenever you are assigning the ip address to this machine you need to assign this ip as a gateway to this machine okay if you are in the vlan 10 you need to put this one as a gateway for the vlan 10 machine if you are in the vlan 20 this is a vlan 20 gateway okay and what else we can say so this already sbi configuration is present here and already this ports are in the trunk okay and this port are in the vlan 10 this are vlan 20 this are vlan 10 this are vlan 10 so they should ping each other they can access the pc this guy can communicate with this guy this guy can communicate with this guy same thing this guy this guy can communicate they can exchange the information they can share the information they can communicate to each other but here we have ticket imagine your manager asks you to do this ticket first ticket ticket 1 is assigned to you pc1 cannot access to pc2 and pc4 so this is a pc1 okay let me erase 
this is a pc one you have the ticket your manager assign you the ticket one this is a ticket one this guy pc one is unable to access or unable to communicate with the pc two and pc four so you need to look why they are unable to communicate what is the issue okay this guy is unable to communicate with pc two and pc four in the ticket one why they are unable to communicate then you have the ticket two pc2 who is the pc2 this guy this guy is unable to communicate with this guy okay this guy is unable to communicate with this guy so you need to solve what is the issue again then you have the pc3 okay pc3 this is a pc3 this guy is unable to communicate with pc1 pc2 pc4 means this guy is unable to communicate with this guy with this guy with this guy he is unable to communicate so you need to start working on this one you need to do the troubleshooting you can go different method you can do the top down or bottom up approach if you remember we have the osi 7 layer osi model 7 layer so we can do from the top down or bottom up approach to do the troubleshooting so we need to look that way or if you are already experienced guy you face the issue so you can start directly doing the troubleshooting anyhow i am going to show you from the basic so no need to worry in our next class we are going to check and we are going to see how we can fix that one okay step by step i am going to teach you so no need to worry in your real scenario also if you face these steps of issue you can follow the same approach okay so in our next class we are going to discuss that one okay thank you